Q&A with Brian Wheeler and Michael Yay! Henry. Give it up. Yay! Hi guys, how are you? No, I don't need a mic. <laughs> no. I really don't need a mic. Can you hear me at the back? Yes. Shall you know? Yes. Oh, thank you. Let's go. <laughs> You having a good day so far? Um, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. No. Meeting lots of fans? Thousands, thousands. That's good. Nearly four and a half thousand, I think, we've had in today. Oh, that's good. Yeah, really good. Fans. No, we, we love doing it because that's mm. what we do is you lot come and see the films and we like to give it back to you as well and we'll see you and tell you stories and, and chat to you and sell photos. <laughs> <laughs> He seems to be having a good laugh. I've been watching, watching you as well, and he's been doing, some, doing good and having some good conversations with the fans. You know, Star Wars is so big. You know, um, what do you think? Why do you think it's lasted so long? What's the magic behind it? Who's phone? Who's got phone on? Need to turn that. Phone. Need to turn that phone on silent. <laughs> Here we go. That's a very good question. I haven't got an easy answer for that one, but um. Because it seems to go on for generation and generation, you know. Every family seems to move on to the next Star Wars saga. So, um, what do you reckon the magic is? I think it's a lot because it keeps regurgitating. And also, uh, the, you've got the Lego things, you've got the uh, Angry Bird thing. They keep selling the Star Wars in every event they can. You know, you've got the Tesco's, you get the mugs, you get the caption figures, you get the DVDs, and then... You get DVD and they bring out another DVD, the making of. Um, so it just keeps reselling itself. And as I say, generations. Like, how many of you are out there, about 50-odd, that when, remember it the first time came, and then you want to show your children, and then the children fall in love with it, because it's a good story. It's a trilogy, which is always the best story. I'm going to carry on. I, can, I, can film it. I, don't, I don't care. And um, it's boy meet girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl. It's a typical story of... Any everyday life, really. And I got my girl. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the story is definitely very, very good. So you worked with, um, you were on Star Wars: Return of the Jedi, both as Ewoks, um, and you also played another part in uh, the Jawa, the famous Jabba he- the Palace scene. Um, scene. What was that like then, playing ah! those two characters? <laughs> See, <laughs> we know he talks here, don't we? But yeah, it was brilliant. Um, as I say, we did we did two and a half weeks or whatever or as an Ewok. And I got asked with a couple of mates to do Jawa as well, which was much better for us because it, because when there was Ewoks, there was like 20, 30, 40 of us. There was a whole load and we were just herded around. But when we went on to Jawas, it was more treated as an actor, as an entertainer. The only trouble was about that, me and Andy, um, one of the other Jawas, we, um, as I say, we were limited to scenes like that. And they had to do a scene that you can only see now in the making of, which makes you buy another one, is that we had to, when uh, Mark Hamill falls through the hole, he then jumps up in Jabba the Hutt's palace and grabs hold of the posts, you know, the grid. And me and Andy were supposed to run over and bang his hands. Unfortunately, we could see like that, and we're running on a plinth like that. We couldn't see, and we kept falling through the hole. And the film, it never made the film. I, I, I have actually got pictures of it. But uh, they're, they're in another file. But, um, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so that was cut. But, no, as a Jawa, it was just more interesting. We had a lot more characters in there um, of the different things and seeing how Jabba the Hutt was actually working was quite interesting as well. So, yeah, it was a bit more fun. The, the other thing that made it a bit more fun for Brian was because an Ewok is the hottest costume I've ever worn in my life. And Brian was quite lucky because one of your job guys weren't really that hot, were they? So um, you were very lucky there, Brian. Yeah, I did read somewhere that you, know, you can only have the costume on for like a minute and a half. So the, the actual headpiece you could wear for only a minute because the oxygen inside and your eyes all steamed up and you couldn't see where you were going, you couldn't breathe. So, you know, it was a nightmare. Yeah, but you don't want to be passing out or anything, <laughs> can you imagine? Yeah. Um, because you've also been in, um, so with that you've got Harrison Ford, you've been playing with, alongside him, you had Carrie Fisher, and you've also had Mark Hamill. What was it like filming with them? Um, 
I was quite exciting, obviously. I mean, um, I was quite in awe of Mark Hamill at the time, and um, you know, and the others were, you know, treated us as everyone should do, all, all equals, you know. So, you know, you had a job to do. So, you had to, uh, as it was my first film, I wanted to make sure I got it right every, every scene and um, try and get as close to the main actors as possible, because I was in more shots that way, you know. <laughs> Brian? I agree. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> so, when did you first realise how big Star Wars actually was? Yeah, straight away. And as Brian said, it's continued year after year, family, generations, and, and still going on as we all know. How did you both get into it? How did you get the role of um, Ewoks? Well, me personally, as I was saying, I worked for a UK border force and one of my colleagues saw an advert saying that um, they were desperate to find little people to play these creatures and he rang them up and said we think we've got the smallest person in Britain and they rang me and it went from there really I mean I thought it was a wind up you know you don't expect working for customers to get a phone call after you're going to London for an audition you know so um that's how I personally got involved in it. It took off from there. Yeah, exactly the same. I was in Hertfordshire. Uh, it was filmed in Hertfordshire and Bournemouth, the Vicks we did in the Ewok Village and the Jabba Hutt's Palace. So they said, in an advert, they wanted people under four foot six. And I just rung up and got the job as well. Not really a taxing audition, really. Is it, do you have like any funny antidotes from your time being on set? You know, was there any particular scene that you found quite funny? Or I, I personally had more accidents on Return of the Jedi. Um, one time, um, I know I told you it was mega hot. And I, well, this one time, I was just, I felt I was on fire. And I was. My bum caught fire, and they threw me on the ground and had to throw water over my bottom <laughs> to put the fire out. Another time where you couldn't see, um, their tree houses were actually built 50 foot off the ground, and I fell over and nipped that in the safety net, you know. So there were a few mishaps in the way, yeah. Uh, my one was, um, my major story is in the Ewok village when um, Harrison Ford is hanging upside down on the, uh, the spit, is uh, we're loading wood underneath him, and uh, I hit him in the head. <laughs> And you actually see it in the film that he clicks his head and it's me hitting him in the head with a lump of wood because we couldn't see a thing. But he was a lovely guy, by the way. Um, he was very professional and he was, like, totally dedicated to what he was doing. Yeah, he was... When he was on set, he was there. And when he wasn't on set, he was learning his lines and learning everything he could, possibly could. So, from your time on the set, um, how long were you actually on the set for? How long did it take to film? all day basically. We'd um, have to be called in for about six o'clock. Um, believe it or not, when we first started doing it, I don't know if you remember Mike, uh, they put us in pyjamas underneath, towel pyjamas to soak up the sweat. And then they made us do exercises to warm us up. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And then they put us in all this foam. And then once the foam was on, they put the, like a sheepskin rug over the top of us and then lifted us up 40 foot up in the air, roughly. 40 foot up in the air on these lifts, and then put us on this set, and then put all our heads on. And as I say, there was 30 to 40, there was all sorts of us. And by the time the first heads had been put on, and by the time the last heads had been put on, the first heads had been on for a couple of minutes, so they were just boiling. And then they decided, as Mike said, they light a fire as well, just to keep us a little bit warm. <laughs> so if you had the choice, out of all the Star Wars films that has been, which, you know, could you, you know, that you could choose a character, which one would it be? You know, you weren't an Ewok. Um, me, I would have been Chewie. <laughs> and Solo. Definitely. So we've had, obviously, uh, recently we had the sad news that Carrie Fisher died. That was very, very sad. Um, Baker died. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's um, quite sad. You, were you quite close to her? Where were you when you found out about her death? Um, I didn't know Kerry that well. Kenny Baker, like um, Brian said, was a very good friend of ours. So that was... In fact, last year was a very bad year, generally, wasn't it, for 
a number of stars that sadly died. I mean, I've worked with David Bowie on Labyrinth, you know, yes. so that was very moving when he died, you know, so it, it, basically it was a bad year last year. Yeah, it was very bad. Graham, what about you? Well, Carrie Fisher, we didn't see, well, we haven't really seen since when we did the filming. Um, I haven't been over to America to do the convention, so I've never personally met her again. But again, for Kenny Baker, um, I've worked with him for years and years since then. I've stayed at his house. I used to wash his car when I stayed at his house. Yeah, Mercedes and a Rolls Royce, how the other half lived. Um, and I saw him at quite a few conventions. And um, he was getting older and older, and he was getting more and more forgetful. Uh, one of the funny stories is he forgets which, or he used to forget which person to sign, whether it was Wicket, R2D2, or one of the Time Bandits, or one. Of, he kept forgetting which one. But uh, two weeks before he passed away, my wife said to me, "Go and say hello to him." And I went and said hello to him, and he went, "Hello, Brian. How you doing?" I went, "Yeah, great. You? Yeah, fine." And I thought, two weeks before he passed away, and then when he passed away, I thought, "Yeah, I said goodbye to you." And I, I still, I've got a shiver down my spine actually now because I thought he was a brilliant actor and he did a lot for our dwarf acting world. It's definitely. Um, so you've got, you know, there's been quite a lot of films now of Star Wars. Have you been approached by any um, producers again to be in any of them? And if yes, um, would you like to be in more? A simple answer, no, <laughs> I'm afraid to say. Um, I, obviously, I think most of us would love to be involved in some way or another, but um, uh, CGI unfortunately is taking away quite a lot of um, work and it's whether or not they would bring another type of creature into the new Star Wars films, but just have to wait and see. Yeah, obviously um, Mike's got the proper job, a sensible job, and I'm still working as an entertainer, actor, so yeah, I would, I would like to be asked to be in the new Star Wars film, but then again, I'd like to be asked to be in any other film. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I would work. <laughs> Not that I don't love these conventions. These conventions are brilliant. But as I say, I, I work. I'm a working actor. I was in um, the last film, uh, Fantastic Beasts. I was in that one. Was, you'll be blinking, you'll miss me. <laughs> but I was in it, and I've got the paycheck to say I was in it. Yeah. No, I, I did see that one, um, Fantastic Beasts. It didn't really... I didn't really enjoy it that much, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you know, I'm a very big Harry Potter fan, which I'll come on to that in a minute. But, you know, recently Star Wars has been sold to Disney. What did you think of that when they sold it? George done very well out of it. <laughs> yeah, no. It doesn't make, doesn't make any difference to me, really, at all. Do you think it was a good move? Do you think, you know, the films have got, you know, the, any better since going to Disney? Well, they've only made one so far, so it's, it's only days. Um, which was which, fine, which you know. I thought there was quite a few similarities with the first one, to, you know, to the originals. Um, so let's we'll see what the next one's like. Yeah, agree. <laughs> <laughs> agree. So, um, moving on from Star Wars, as I said, we're in Harry Potter as well, weren't you? quite a few of yes. them. Wow, I was in the last one, Deadly Hallows Part 2, as uh, Green God. How was that filming that? Um, quite tedious. The makeup was um, between four and five hours each time at 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, that was most enjoyable. And then to do a day shooting starting at six in the evening, I was over the moon about it. <laughs> yeah, I tend to agree with that one. Again, it was a whole load of us there. So it was like a conveyor belt of getting us ready, getting us moved, put us on, get us dressed, whatever. I, um, I did one other, I did uh, The Half-Blood Prince where there was only three of us in that, which that was quite good, uh, except again, they decided to blow us up and they set fire to us after putting us in a warm costume, putting shoes on that were twice as big as my feet and then running up a hill with makeup and eyes I could just see like that. So I think they've got it in for dwarfs. <laughs> Let's dress them up and set blood fire to them. <laughs> Yeah, it's, those um, costumes must be very tedious, sitting there for so long in makeup. You know, what did you do when you were just sitting there? Were you just reading or just thinking of things? Oh, you don't get time to read. You can't move your hands. You can't move. You just sit there. Um, that's why, again, um, you speak to my wife and she'll tell you how much patience I've got because I can just sit there for like four hours and go into my own little world. 
and you have to because you can't move. Uh, sometimes you can't blink. Sometimes you've got to keep your eyes shut. Sometimes uh, you've got to have your mouth open to have a teeth fitted and your black eyes in. Um, and one day they did call me in to have all my makeup done up, and it was to say four to five hours. And I sat there, and then the makeup designer came up and went, "Yeah, that's okay. Take it off." And they took it off. Uh, two hours taking it off because it doesn't just lift off. There's four parts to it. There's a part there, part there, part there, and a part there. And it's all made up, so you can't just rip it off. You have to take it all apart separately with glue, dis- dissolving stuff. And oh, he's off. He's off. Your hair to the longest, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, you have it now. You have it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can gather then, obviously, that those costumes from Harry Potter must have been the most complex ones, I'm gathering. They were. They weren't were too bad to wear, obviously, because it's a, an actual suit. So um, I did ask if I could buy the suits they made for me. They wanted two and a half thousand. So I declined that because the amount of material involved in the suit for me <laughs> is a little bit unfair, you know. And it's not going to fit anyone else, so it's a bit, a bit un- unkind of they went to Mothercare and got one foot in. <laughs> <laughs> that was my job, you know. So, what was it like being on a Harry Potter set? <laughs> <laughs> well, as Brian's already said, there is a heck of a lot of boredom. Um, you are hanging around for hours and hours. You can't wander off because the director might want to do a particular scene with your character there and then. So, you know, it really is an extremely long day. Every day is, you know, you're looking at 12 hours per day. How long are you working on there for then? How long you know, did it take? I think I did about 10 to 12 days myself. Is yours similar? Yeah, yeah it'd be about similar. Yeah. As you said, you were in Labyrinth with David Bowie. What was that like being with David and, you know, the part in that? I mean, on a, on a personal note, that, that was my um, favourite film because the Henson family are a really lovely family and I really enjoyed their friendship and their kindness. Uh, and David was very down to earth. He used to come out with us in the evening. So, um, from, from a personal point of view, I did love doing that and being involved in that film. I do like that film. Has everybody else seen Labyrinth? It's yeah. such an amazing film. I actually didn't realise who the lead actress was until a few years later. And I saw her again. I was like, oh my God, it's actually her. I can't remember her name, unfortunately, in the minute. But um, moving on, you were also in a few other, um, few other films. Can you tell me a bit about those? Yeah, well, all sorts of films. Uh, Never Ending Story. I played a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Class, that was. Uh, Wagner's Life Story, I played a dwarf. Uh, but one of my favourite films I did do is uh, Phantom of the Opera with Gerard Butler. Uh, that was a lovely film, a lovely job. Uh, I was on there for months. Um, I was the only small person on there again. But then again, I had makeup that was, I would sit in there for hours having four different makeups put on in four different times through the film. Um, and they were, I was on there for so long, they made their own little chair for me to sit down on. Because I couldn't sit on the tall ones, they made me a little one, which is quite nice. I did like that film. I'm really into Phantom of the Opera musicals and things like that. So that must have been incredible. <coughs> Jared Butler's voice is very nice. I never realised he could sing. Yeah, the lovely thing about that, you, you say Gerard Butler. Well, when um, I was on it, I was told that I had a non- non-speaking part which was fine by me, and I just carried on doing what I did. And then there was a big number of a song uh, that Minnie Driver sings, um, and I'm tucked at the back, out the way, and um, I'm saying to all of them, ah, oh, you, you're singing, learn the lines, learn the lines. And then suddenly Joel looks at me and says, Brian, we can't sing you, see you. Why don't you stand on that big ball over there and sing? And I had to learn the words, and you do see me in the film standing up on this big ball and don't look at my mouth too closely. (laughs) That was such a good film. I really did enjoy that. You were also in Winner, weren't you, Michael? You played um, Warwick Davis' stunt double. Oh, in Winner, yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. Well, I was a very young chap. Obviously good looking in those days. And, um, oh, no, he oh, they're leaving. Come back. <laughs> no, well, that was an enjoyable film as well. I mean, the 80s, I, I did three blockbusters, you know, Labyrinth, Willow, and obviously Jedi. Oh, it was definitely an incredible time in the 80s. I did 
I prefer films from the 80s, to be honest, to the 90s. You know, nowadays it's very graphic, very graphic in the films. But um, tell me, what was it like um, working with Warwick? Because he was also in Harry Potter, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, <laughs> what, what, um, what, as we all know, Warwick has gone on to incredible things and um, we've had luck to him, you know. But he runs an agency which I belong to, so, um, and he's been a personal friend because. Um, my family used to socialise with his family a lot. Um, now he's so busy, you know, we don't get much time. But um, so I've obviously known him since Jedi and before. Yes, um, he's brilliant. I absolutely love him. He's so funny, especially in um, in Willow. Oh, it's just an amazing film. We've all seen Willow, that I gather as well. No, oh, you really want to watch it? It's really, really good. But um, before moving on then to yourself, you can all ask a question. Um, out of all the films you've been in, I know you said it was Labyrinth, wasn't it? What was your favourite, Brian? Phantom of the Opera. Fair enough on that note, then. Has anybody else got any questions that they want to ask? Do you have a, a particular favourite Star Wars episode? Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. <laughs> because it finished all the, the whole story, they could have just actually finished it there and just had the three. Uh, if you think about films, what uh, uh, goes on now, it's, it's always a trilogy. Um, the Indiana Jones was a trilogy and then they made the fourth one, which didn't really fit. You know, Die Hard, three. Uh, Back to the Future, three. It's nearly always three in, when you're making films like that. Anybody else? Were you a fan of the Star Wars franchise before you actually cast in? Yeah, I was. Mm, yeah, was a, yeah. a fan, not a major mm. collector like you see people here. But yeah, a fan. Anybody else? <laughs> no. <laughs> no one's got any questions whatsoever. It's, no, nothing? Yes. If, if they came calling, would you do, say Doctor Who? Would you make the new Doctor Who? I want to be Doctor yeah. Who! <laughs> I want to be in Doctor Who! And I want to be a Dalek. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't Jimmy like B's it. just got, yeah. or he's been in Doctor Who, he's just got R2-D2, uh, and they're just, I'm a big Doctor fan, they've just done episodes of, um, in the future with two guys playing robots, and it's the same agent that I've got, and I'm not there! Other than that, I'm Yeah, you're upsetting now. <laughs> so, um, with Doctor Who then, who's your favourite Doctor? David Turner. Yeah, same here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he was a very good doctor. So, any any more questions? The man at the back says, "What time are you closing?" I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, um, it's been really great speaking with you guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here. Just before we go, sorry, it's a little personal message from me. But can we have a quick round of applause for Kenny Baker? Because okay. I just like. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you so much for and you know to this Q and A. My pleasure.